Hello humans, it's your host Corey, and before we get into this week's episode, I just wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons so, so much. I'm so grateful to you guys that you continue to support me and the show. Without that support, I would not be able to continue to do what I love doing each week, putting these episodes out for you guys free into the world, and so you make that possible, and I just really wanted to make sure that you knew how important you were to that process, and so thank you so much for your continued support of me and the show, and now we can jump into this week's episode. Welcome to A Well Cared For Human, the podcast that tries to convince you that you are 100% normal and an even better than okay example of the human species, despite the fact that sometimes we feel like the craziest, most incapable, or worthless creatures on the face of this planet. I'm Corey an author, a creative, and the host of the show. Whatever you're bringing to the table today, I hope this episode proves to be a dose of inspiration for you on your quest to become a well-cared-for human. You can find the episode show notes, your free wellness blueprint, and more at awellcaredforhuman.com. And as always, thank you for listening. Hello humans, it's your host Corey, and this week we're going to talk about self-esteem. Now this is a requested episode. I received an email in which someone was telling me about how they struggle with their self-esteem, they just don't feel very good about themselves, and so I thought, yes, I should absolutely put an episode out about it. I haven't specifically talked about self-esteem, but self-esteem is a byproduct, a natural byproduct of having a great relationship with yourself. So self-esteem is something that's going to happen. It's going to increase if you continue to work on your four pillars. And if you don't know what I mean by the four pillars, if you're new to the show, first of all, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And secondly, please go back and listen to episode one in which I break down the four pillars of wellness and how it relates to our relationship with ourself. And so if those four pillars are in great shape, naturally we will have better self-esteem. That being said, this person's email was so sweet and it was clear that they were really struggling with how they felt about themselves. And I just wanted to say that give yourself a break because we all struggle with self-esteem. Even if you have great great self-esteem most of the time, it doesn't mean that you will always have great self-esteem. It is constantly being attacked by external forces <laughs> beyond our control. And so that can be either body shaming or that can be negative narratives about our bodies or that can be negative narratives about how we live, how successful we are. That's coming at us from all these different sources in media or even family and friends. And so when that's happening, our self-esteem can tank, it can get diminished. And so don't give yourself a hard time about that. And we just need to continue to invest in that relationship with ourselves in order for it to be really strong. And so how can we do that? How can we make sure that we have great self-esteem? Now, first of all, I just want to clarify what I mean by self-esteem. So when I say self-esteem, it's do you like yourself? Like, do you hold yourself in high regard? Do you appreciate yourself? Do you care about yourself? Are you grateful for yourself? And also there's this component of having confidence in your abilities. So self-esteem and self-confidence they're really close. I personally myself don't really understand the difference between the two of them. I feel like they're kind of the same thing. But if you have great self-esteem, you will also have confidence in yourself and your ability to do things. And so self-esteem, self-confidence, that's what we're talking about today. Another aspect of self-esteem and self-confidence is self-compassion, self-forgiveness. How good are you at forgiving yourself when you make mistakes? How much compassion do you have for yourself and where you've been, where you're coming from? And so I do have episodes specifically on self-compassion and forgiveness. So please go back and listen to those if you feel like you need more information in those areas. But there's also that component of basically how kindly do you think of yourself? How much do you appreciate what you've been through? And that's also a very big component of self-esteem. We don't necessarily think of self-forgiveness and self-esteem as being intertwined, but there is this connection between how much you understand yourself and how much you agree with yourself as far as like what have you done in the past like do you understand why you did the things that you did like even if you feel like that was the wrong decision or you made a mistake or maybe even screwed up in a really big way like do you understand 
who you were at that time and why it happened like that and are you able to make peace with that and so that does go hand in hand with the self-esteem because if it's really low if you kind of hate your past decisions if you hate who you were you're not going to have great self-esteem because you have this self-loathing in its place and so being able to understand yourself in the context of your life is very important i talk a lot about this also in the who killed my mother show the who killed my mother podcast which looks at the death of my mother her being murdered and the kind of retrospective I did of our life together what it was like growing up with a mother who had mental illness what it was like growing up in these really difficult circumstances there are a lot of things that she did that I had to learn to live with that I had to forgive her for there are a lot of things that I did as a hurt person who hurts people you know when we are hurt we also don't make great decisions. So there was a period of my life where I was not really very considerate of others. I was just trying to survive or I reacted poorly in certain situations. And so I had to make peace with that. I had to come to understand who I was and what I was dealing with at that time. And so as I healed that aspect of myself, as I healed those past hurts and began to understand myself in the context of my life, like, yeah, I did this, but this is why I did this. I was able to let a lot of things go, forgive myself, and natural self-esteem arose from that because you begin to appreciate more like what you've been through and who you are as a person and how those experiences made you who you are. And so that's also something to keep in mind. And so the self-forgiveness, self-compassion, understanding yourself in the context of your life, that connection to the four pillars, all of that together self-esteem will naturally arise from that so there's nothing specifically like let me do this and it will make self-esteem <laughs> you know it's just something that happens if you have a great relationship with yourself you will naturally feel good about yourself if you love yourself and building the four pillars is all about falling in love with yourself and so it'll happen for you now the self-confidence aspect though there is something that we can do specifically to build up our self-confidence now most people don't like what you have to do <laughs> to build up your self-confidence because basically you have to try to do things that are a little bit scary or you have to put yourself out there. You have to challenge yourself in some way. And then when you achieve those things, when you overcome that thing, then you're like, ah, look at me, I'm amazing. So there is this need to get out of your own comfort zone in order to build that confidence a bit, which most of us don't really want to do. We do not think of, oh, not a great time. <laughs> I can be more self-confident. Most people are just like, I just want to be confident. I'll do some power poses. You know, there's this pose where you can put your hands on your hips. It's the Wonder Woman pose, right? And then you you will feel more confident. It's like two minutes of this and your hormone, hormone levels change or something like this. Uh, that is possible but it's not it's not sustainable <laughs> like I can't walk around in my life in the Wonder Woman pose asking myself you know do I feel confident now that's not going to really work for me in the long term and so I need something that's more consistent that's going to stay with me over the long term and that's more having this really great baseline knowledge of who I am as a person having this baseline trust of who I am and what I can do and so that is challenging yourself and overcoming it in order to build that confidence, you need to have goals. And so there needs to be something specific that you're gonna set out to do so that then you can do it. And that way you will be able to prove to yourself, it's like having evidence, like I have evidence that I am an awesome person. Cause see, I did this thing. So one of the things I think of is when I used to be into martial arts. So in my 20s, I trained in Wei Chi Ru. It's this Japanese form of martial arts. And so when I started, I didn't know anything. I was this, you know, little white belt couldn't throw a punch couldn't do anything and then three years later I had earned my black belt so I had gone to the dojo I had invested that time over these years and then I saw progress and so when I was able to have my black belt I was like ah look you know see it amounted to something I learned something I did really good and similarly in the same context with the martial arts example there was also a World Cup, the Weichiru World Cup, and so I participated in that, and I got first place in sparring, and that was very exciting. And so when you do something like that, when you set out to do a goal, and then you win or you achieve something, then you have something to be proud of. You have something to show to yourself. See, I can do stuff. See, I can say that I'm going to do this, and I can show up and do it. And it doesn't have to be anything 
like martial arts or it doesn't have to be anything that has like a concrete metal. We don't have to engage our competitive spirit <laughs> at all. But if you are a naturally competitive person, you can leverage that to help you build more confidence in yourself and in your abilities. You can also just do smaller goals, step-by-step -step consistency type goals in which you can show yourself, see, I am the kind of person that keeps showing up. So say, for example, you were like, I'm going to go to the gym every day for a month. And then you do go to the gym every day for a month. They'd be like, look, I'm really someone who says that they're going to do something and then they do it. And so even just smaller goals like that, and it doesn't have to be a month, it could be a week. It could be for the next three days, I'm going to go to the gym. <laughs> It could be today I'm going to go to the gym. Make those goals as small and achievable as possible that you need to. Don't have a really big goal and then not be able to do it because you're just going to discourage yourself. So make sure that the goals are just above your your level if possible. So for example, what I mean by that is that you would have to be challenged just a little bit to make it happen. It would be just a little hard for you, but not so hard that you can't do it and then you're gonna be discouraged and that you're gonna give up and you're gonna use this as proof that you actually are a terrible person who can't do anything. How you speak to yourself really matters. And so don't set yourself up for these situations where you're gonna give yourself a hard time, where you're going to be like, oh, see, this is just proof that I can't do anything right. This is just proof that nothing's ever gonna change for me. Don't do that to yourself. Be really kind to yourself and how you speak to yourself. You believe the things that you say about yourself. So make sure that whatever it is you're saying to yourself is really positive, really affirming, really reassuring. And so when you're in a situation where you're trying to build self-esteem, positive self-talk is really important. One of the reasons why it's so important is because what broke down our self-esteem is often this hypercritical voice. Now that might be the voice of someone who was in your life, like if you had a really critical parent or you had a friend who betrayed you or spoke really poorly of you, or maybe you had an abusive sibling or a family member, or maybe even just from the world, someone said, you don't look the way you should look, you're not thin enough, you're not smart enough, you're not whatever, whatever these fake conditions were that these people had put on you that voice is in your head and then that is making your self-esteem tank it's making you feel like you're not good enough and so how you're going to have to counteract that is with really strong positive self-talk in which you now become the louder voice in your own mind saying these loving kind things to yourself so set yourself up for success and when you put yourself out of your comfort zone to prove to yourself how capable you are, just make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. You don't put yourself too far out there so that you don't trigger that self-criticism if you don't hit that big goal. Because it'd be unrealistic for you to go from zero to 20 in a single bound, right? So just look for those small incremental steps that can challenge you. There's something you can be proud of, but that aren't so much that they will overwhelm you. Now, in addition to the positive self-talk, which is really, really important, celebrating yourself is also really, really important. And this kind of goes also with cleaning up the mental dialogue around self-esteem. So what I mean by that is it's very common for us to set out to do something. So let's say we have a goal, like I will be happy when I'm now making $80,000 a year. Let's just say that that's a goal that you had for yourself. If I can make $80,000 a year, I'll be happy with my career. Now, let's say you make 80,000 and then you think, oh no, it really needs to be 100,000. And you immediately move on to that next goal. Now it has to be 100,000. Or even let's say I wanted to lose five pounds. I don't necessarily recommend anybody being obsessed with losing weight. That might just be my eating disorder recovery speaking. <laughs> I don't think being obsessed with a number on a scale is good for you. But let's just say that for this example, you were like, I need to lose five pounds. And so then you lose five pounds and you're like, no, it really needs to be 10. And then you lose 10. And you're like, no, it really needs to be 15. So when we keep moving the goalpost like that and whatever the goal was, whatever the ambition was, we're telling ourselves continuously that we're not enough. Like I did this, but it wasn't enough. I did this, but it wasn't enough. I did this and it wasn't enough. So it just keeps escalating and it keeps compounding that narrative that what we do is not good enough. Now that's really dangerous because that's not quite so different than the negative self-talk that might be going in our mind and tearing down our self-esteem. So in order to interrupt that momentum of always moving the goalposts and always telling ourselves that we didn't measure up, that in fact we need to be somewhere else now, is to stop and celebrate 
every single milestone that you achieve. Now, this is hard because I am saying this to you knowing full well that I don't always do this. <laughs> so it's a little hypocritical for me to be the kind of person to say, oh, you know, you should just stop and celebrate every single milestone. So for example, I'm writing a book right now and I should be celebrating every time that I get to the end of a book, right? This is probably my 32nd book or something at this point. I, I've lost count, 30 something books. And so as I'm writing this book, when I'm done, I should absolutely celebrate. But I'm very guilty the other 20 something times of, because I've only really celebrated like three books or something, that when I get to the end of the book, I'm immediately like, okay, what do I need to write next? Okay, what needs to be done on the schedule next? My mind moves on to the next project. And so I don't even celebrate the fact that I just wrote another book and that I could be proud of that and that I did something that used to be really, really hard. And let's be clear, writing books is still hard for me. <laughs> it's not that it necessarily gets easier. I still struggle with things like block or getting too in my head, thinking too much about like the final product and, oh, is this actually going to help people? Or, oh, who am I to even write about this? So I do de deal with self-doubt just like anybody else. But the point is, is that in order to interrupt that, I have to celebrate the wins. Like I have to take a moment and appreciate what I've actually done because otherwise it will just never feel like enough. And these celebrations that you set out to do, they don't have to be dramatic. You don't have to have like a whole block party or take a trip to Aruba or whatever your budget allows every time you do something small. But anything I can do to just mark that moment, to have a quiet moment of contentment, of appreciation for myself, take a moment to talk to myself positively again trying to make my voice the latter voice being like I am so proud that I did this look at what I have I now have another book in my hands that's something to be really appreciative of to be really proud of and so just taking that moment to to give yourself the affirmation and the confirmation that you need to interrupt that negative self-talk that happens or that it's not enough it's not enough we have to keep going and we need to slow that down any way that we can and celebrating the wins, even the small ones, is one way to do that. Now another way to think about investing in your self-esteem is to look at your relationships. Now do you have positive, affirming, loving people in your life? Because if you don't, if there's someone who's telling you what a piece of crap you are, that might be why you have low self-esteem. <laughs> if you have someone who speaks to you poorly, if they're that terrible voice in your mind, it's very possible that they are bad for your self-esteem, that they're breaking your self-esteem down. So do an assessment of your relationships. Do a relationship audit. Are there people in your life who make you feel good about yourself? Are there people in your life who support your goals? Are there people in your life who you could call up to celebrate your wins and be like, hey, I finished my book. And they're like, ah, oh, that's great. Let's go get a drink or let's go out for coffee. Like, do you have people like that in your life? And if you do, absolutely, that's fantastic. And I'm so happy for you. If you don't, as once upon a time, I did not, I did not have anyone who was positive like that for me. You can look at ways to build those relationships. Look at people who would be great for your self-esteem, that they would speak to you in a way that made you see the positive aspects of yourself. Because you want friends or you want a found family or whomever it is that you're investing in. You want them to be the kind of people who make you see the good in yourself, who make you feel like you're worth believing in, who you're worth trusting. They will mirror that goodness back to you. And so if they don't, if they take from you instead, it's probably not a relationship worth keeping. It's probably a reason why you don't have great self-esteem. So maybe move on from those people. I can't make that decision for you. Obviously, that is your call. But it's something I would seriously consider thinking hard about if you're dealing with that kind of destructive person in your life. Because that's definitely what it was with my dad, right? Like, my father doesn't speak kindly about me. He doesn't speak positively about me. So I don't speak to him anymore because that's not good for my self-esteem. That's not good for my self-love to have someone's voice like that in my ears. And so if you have someone like that in your life, it might be time to let him go. Also make sure that you are taking good care of your body. So it's not immediately apparent what the connection is between self-esteem and good self-care, but I have noticed that it's really hard for me to feel great about myself if I'm not exercising, if I'm not eating well, if I'm not showering, if I'm not sleeping, <laughs> if I feel like a literal slug 
<laughs> a filthy, stinky slug. I don't feel great about myself. It's really hard to feel great about myself. Now, we do know that things like exercise, for example, that they raise our endorphins, and that makes us feel great about ourselves, too. So there probably is some physiology involved here. I am not a neuroscientist, so I can't tell you anything about that. But in addition to just the the endorphin aspect, there's also just how you feel in your body, right? Like we feel better when we're clean. We feel better when our clothes are clean, when we're in comfortable clean clothes. We feel better when we've had a decent amount of sleep. We feel better when we've eaten, right? I don't know about you, but if I get too hungry, <laughs> I definitely don't feel great about myself or the world. And so make sure you're also getting those basic needs met because I know it seems silly, like we're talking about something like self-esteem, what does basic needs have to do about it? But it really is hard to do that if we're not even meeting our basic needs. But basically, these are the ways that we can invest in our self-esteem. And so the positive self-talk, super important, making sure we're taking good care of ourselves, that we give ourselves the message that we're worth taking care of, that we're worth getting enough sleep, we're worth feeding, we're worth exercising sending that message, being consistent, and then also making sure that we have people around us who are mirroring our goodness back to us and that we're not continuing to drive that it's not enough, it's not enough by not celebrating our wins, by not appreciating ourselves, and giving ourselves credit for all the work and the hard effort that we put into our days, into our lives. And when we look at all this together, we're talking about the four pillars. So when we invest in our body, when we take good care of our body, that is the body pillar. When we talk about rewiring the way we speak to ourselves, how we think about ourselves, that's the mind and emotions pillar. When we talk about celebrating our wins, about giving ourselves credit, connecting with joy, that's the spirit pillar. And then when we talk about looking at our relationships, they are important for how we view ourselves, that mirroring of that goodness, that's the connections pillar. And so when I said that self-esteem is a natural product of investing in your relationships with yourself, that's the most important thing, this relationship with yourself then you will naturally have higher self-esteem. But I hope that by breaking it down and getting it a little bit more granular, it was a little more clear for you today. And that's it for today, dear human. As always, I hope you found the episode useful. And if you would like to write into the show and ask me for my thoughts on something that you're dealing with, I'm always happy to hear from you guys. You can contact me through any of my social media or you can email me at corey at coreymshrum.com. Otherwise, I will be back next week with another episode of A Well Cared For Human, and until then, please take good care of you. This episode of A Well Cared For Human was written and produced by me, Corey Marie. The music was by Late Night Feeler and Esther Abrami. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider visiting my Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you get early ad-free access to the episodes, as well as a monthly patrons-only Q&A, bonus videos, and more. Not to mention that your Patreon support lets me know that you find value in the show and want it to continue. You can find me on Patreon by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash Corey Marie. If you can't support the show financially, that is okay. You can still subscribe to the show, leave a review of the show, and recommend the show to your friends, not just the neurotic ones. All of this helps so much. And as always, thank you for listening.